Our next speaker is a passionate futurist and a collaborative leader with a compelling and influential perspective on the future of business, work, and technologies. He advises industry leaders on the future of their businesses in response to not only the emergence of new technologies, but also the evolution of our society as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Vice President and Strategic Advisor for Cognizant, Mr. Manish Bal. Welcome, Manish. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Oliver and the entire team for inviting Cognizant to this uh, session, right? Very excited to be part of it. Uh, let me share my screen. Can you please confirm if you can see my screen? Okay, we can see it. Okay, great. So let's get started, right? As I said, you know, excited to be part of today's session. I share my thoughts on human plus machine mastering the future of work economy. If you look at, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, right, is the great story of our time. Decades in the making, finally, AI is out of the laboratory and infusing itself into each and every aspect of our lives. Over the next few years, AI will be all around us. It'll help us heal our sick, you know, raise our children, lower our energy bills, and uncover many new aspects of our society. So AI is about to usher into a new industrial revolution, and those who manage it properly obviously will generate significant you know, economic growth. And the use of AI is moving beyond Facebook and Google, you know, of the world, right? The commercial aspect of AI is becoming very, very interesting. Eight out of uh, you know, 10 hedge funds in the US, they made $8 billion purely based on AI algorithms. And uh, an average, you know, on an average, a radiologist you know, can read 20,000 films in a year with 82% accuracy. And a man machine you know, can do it right, with almost 100% uh, you know, accuracy, accuracy, and that too 10 times faster. And we have already seen you know, the kind of uh, you know, driverless uh, you know, cars, the kind of uh, you know, roads that these uh, uh, cars have traveled. And the amount of reading you will do in two weeks, a machine can do it in two hours. So the point is, uh, the machine has already surpassed you know, human capabilities in many ways. So the age of uh, you know, AI, that's where it's creating sort of mixed emotions. On one hand, you have a capitalist stream. You know? There is a tremendous pressure on business leaders to reduce costs, to grow revenue. And there's no way they can ignore the enormous benefits of uh, automation, of uh, you know, artificial intelligence. So they will go after these technologies, no doubt about it. But on the other hand, AI means you know, layoffs especially when you have renowned institutions like Oxford saying that uh, you know, 40, 47% of jobs will disappear over the next uh, 20, 25 years. So this is scary. This is making us uh, you know, rethink the fundamentals of our institutions and the very nature of work itself. But what we are uh, you know, thinking about it, what we have been talking about is we have a very optimistic point of view when it comes to future of work and jobs. Because if you look at you know, jobs and the new machine, right, usually have three scenarios, the job automation, the job enhancement, and then new jobs creation. Unfortunately, 90% of today's conversation is happening in this bucket, job automation. So that's where we keep seeing media headlines, you know, that bots are coming and they're going to take our you know, job. So definitely this is more scary than the sci-fi movies. But we believe 90% of tomorrow's activity, tomorrow's engagement is going to be in these two buckets, job enhancement and new jobs creation that no one you know, usually talks about. And as per our estimates, only 12% of jobs are at the risk of being taken over by bots. Whether you are a technical person, non-technical, regardless of the industry, 12% uh, of jobs will be taken care of by you know, bots. So all the 12 percent, you know, appears uh, very, very uh, low uh, in terms of percentage, right? But still, we are talking about millions of jobs globally. So definitely, there will be job losses. But the point is, 75 percent of existing jobs are going to get enhanced, altered with new tools and capabilities, which means that your job remains. But the job description, the performance metrics, the output levels are going to get uh, you know, altered. They are going to get enhanced with new capabilities that you have got. And then 13% of net new jobs will also be created in the future that no one you know, usually talks about. So just think about it. 10, 15 years ago, right? who had ever thought you know, that social media, the rise of social media platforms are going to create many new jobs like Twitter, you know, Data Wrangler, and many other new jobs that we've witnessed 
years over the last uh, you know 10 to 15 years so why the future is going to be you know any different so we need to be more focused on these two buckets enhancement and invention because that's where majority of uh, jobs and ultimately work is going to be delivered as we move forward the problem the biggest problem with all the predictions that you see in the market uh, is the confusion between a job and a task so for instance right if you are uh, you know if you are a lawyer right that's your job so what do you do as a lawyer you perform number of tasks so now with automation with ai some or many of your tasks will be taken care of and that's going to happen for good because now you can be more focused on what really matters to your clients what really you know matters to judges and you know juries uh, so so the question is right whether this job is going to get automated that is not the question the more important piece is the question is will this task of your job is going to get automated or not so once we start deconstructing jobs into specific tasks we realize that for many of the tasks that you perform today tasks that are very repetitive in nature tasks that do not provide a lot of fun tasks uh, you know that follow a simple uh, you know thumb based rule if this do this if that do that so those type kind of tasks you know should be taken care by machines because machines are good at doing uh, you know following uh, the the rules uh, and uh, that's where we really need to be more uh, dependent on machines but for more important tasks right when it comes to human centricity uh, so definitely you will realize that many of your tasks either will have a hybrid you know involvement which means humans plus machines you are going to leverage the insights that you are getting from machines and you are going to use those insights you know for decision making for innovation and for many other you know activities or you will find uh, you know many of your tasks right will still be very very human centric which machines you know can't mimic so so that's where we really need to bust this myth that jobs are going away jobs are not going away but yes uh, many or some of uh, you know the tasks of your job will definitely be taken care of by you know machines because if you look at you know the when it comes to the future of work the balance is very very you know clear because humans right what we call are good at the art of the job which means the judgment you know the visual cues emotion empathy uh, social context we are very good at taking the decision based on the context of our situation whereas machines are good at the size of the job which means the computational capabilities the data analysis and pattern recognition you can't beat a computer on number crunching and when you blend the two that's where the magic happens because we are going to use the size of the job which means the machine related capabilities abilities and blend those capabilities with our own strengths to create the future of work so whether you are a policeman you are a physician nurse educator a coder technologist so we believe each and every job and every industry is going to get altered with the, you know this thumb rule which means human plus machine because humans are good at the art of the job whereas machines are good at the size of the job just to give you an example right how it is becoming a reality in the you know organization so this is very interesting example of uh, you know dbs bank so dbs bank in singapore you know uh, they are leveraging ai to enhance the role of a recruiter to support the fast growth of its wealth uh, you know management uh, business so it's a virtual bank uh, you know recruiter uh, and uh, this uh, algorithm this uh, you know bot review resumes you know collect uh, uh, application responses you know for pre screening questions and uh, you know conduct uh, psychometric profiling assessments on candidates so just by automating the pre screening process right look at the amount of savings that the bank has got they saved 40 hours per month and reduced the amount of time to screen candidates by 75% and also recruiters time spent on applications decreased by 75%. So you can very well imagine recruiters were not very well uh, you know leverage for the right set of uh, work for the right set of tasks because going through resumes right visiting universities conducting the first round of interviews so i think those tasks should be taken care of by machines and as a result of uh, doing this these are the savings right that uh, the organizations have uh, you know experience and the candidates drop off rate also decreased from 15 to you know just 3% and this is what the head of uh, talent acquisition group you know had to say that candidates often busy during the day and many of our recruiters they end up working long hours uh, you know to to 
cater to meet candidate schedule. And that's where their virtual recruiter, Jim, right, by the name Jim, has uh, really helped the employees, you know, workload so that, uh, you know, now candidates can take the tests, uh, the psychometric tests and other sort of tests at any point of, you know, time. And, uh, you know, recruiter, the gym, you know, the virtual recruiter, uh, you know, it does the the initial round of, uh, you know, screening and sort of, uh, you know, provide the right, uh, you know, set of candidates uh, for the next round, uh, you know, to be uh, moved into. So this is a great example of how human plus machine, right, is becoming a reality in organizations. All said and done, you know, uh, this is good, right? We have, uh, you know, looked at human plus machine is the new reality. Machines are going to help us uh, become better human at the end of the day. But what to do when machines fail? Just think about it. Thousands of people die in road accidents every year, but they hardly become a global news. But a self-driving car killing a pedestrian that happened, you know, some time ago became an international headline. So that's scary because as intelligent machines use, you know, increases, right? We will witness new and unknown, you know, consequences that may surprise us. So what if an AI powered, you know, medical system makes a recommendation uh, that leads to a serious injury or even death? So this could have a big impact on company's brand and finances. So customer loyalty, you know, is the result of trust that is cultivated over many years, but it can be destroyed, you know, in a single day. And this is one very interesting example, you know, how machines are delivering, you know, the biased outcome. This, is hap this happened with one of the customers for uh, a large, uh, you know, bank. And uh, what happened? This customer by the name Sam, you know, Sam, uh, you know, was shopping along with his, uh, you know, friends in a certain market in a certain area. And, uh, you know, he really enjoyed doing the shopping. And when, uh, you know, Sam received uh, the bank statement, right, it came as a shock to him. He saw that his credit limit of his, you know, credit card uh, reduced from, from almost $11,000, right, to $4,000. And that was quite, uh, you know, shocking to Sam. And Sam was trying to figure out, you know, what was happening, why, you know, it, it uh, you know, happened. And uh, it, uh, you know, it came out that the algorithm provided the recommendation to reduce his, uh, uh, you know, the credit limit. Why? Because he was shopping at places where customer base was expected to have a poor credit repayment history. That's how algorithm read, you know, his shopping behavior. So where you shop can actually impact your credit history. So this is, uh, you know, very scary. You know, obviously it is going to have a huge impact on, you know, banks' uh, brand as well as, uh, you know, their finances. A customer can drag the bank into a legal battle as well. So, so definitely, yes, this is something which is becoming more scary because the machine, uh, you know, usage in our daily lives, right, is becoming more and more important. But we still don't know how to address the unknown the negative, you know, outcomes of, uh, you know, machines failure. Because at the end of the day, right, if, if you look at it, right, uh, the unexpected or biased results or the, you know, perpetuation of dangerous errors, right, we are wondering what can possible go wrong with machines. We are yet to experience many unknown, you know, uh, we, because we don't know how exactly these algorithms are going to behave, you know, in the future. And that's where we found 65% uh, of organizations across Asia Pacific, they are concerned about the unknown consequences, right, that could occur if an intelligent machine fails or delivers a negative, you know, outcome, right? So this is scary. On one hand, we cannot stop the increased, you know, use of, uh, you know, these algorithms. But on the other hand, we still don't know what to do, you know, when, when machines fail. And that's where we believe we really need to do a more proactive job when it comes to leveraging, you know, these machines, because ultimately we are the creators of AI. OK, humans are the creators of AI. And that's our, you know, very powerful toolkit. So we have to figure out ways to ensure that as a creator, we are still in control of, uh, you know, using these uh, algorithms, using these machines. And it's up to us to ensure that, you know, they don't amplify exclusion, which means they do not deliver any negative or biased outcome at the end of the day. Because it's inevitable, you know, because human biases are being coded into 
machine learning, uh, you know, algorithms, the outcomes, the way these algorithms are going to deliver the outcome. So how to ensure that, uh, you know, our own human biases are not encoded, you know, into these algorithms. And ultimately the goal is, right, those who are trying to create a perfect machine or the perfect algorithm, that's not going to happen because it's a learning process. So it's to be, it's better to be, you know, uh, prepared for something which is going to be gradual rather than becoming you know perfect so definitely it's all in our hands you know how exactly we are going to handle these uh, you know algorithms so there are some uh, you know approaches right that we suggest organizations and individuals can follow to ensure that ai uh, you know is not delivering uh, any negative bias or the creepy you know outcomes at the end of the day so what are our recommendations uh, so definitely we need to keep humans right in the loop humans are still very much uh, you know much more sophisticated and sensitive than bots so the human intelligence is still uh, very much required and that will remain the case at least for the next uh, you know several years so we have people working with uh, you know ai for things like content management and tracking maybe you know bad guys so what we really need is more of a hybrid approach for defending against you know toxic bots so it starts with understanding uh, the people you serve and then keeping them in mind through the testing and release you know, process. So we still need to keep humans in the loop. And again, right, uh, those who are designing machines to be independent, we believe that uh, you know, they are making quite a dreadful mistake because machines still need humans to control, to educate, to train them you know, better as we move forward. And also, right, if you look at, we need new rules in our organizations with the rise of uh, you know ai we need to train and hold ai engineers designers developers uh, innovators you know accountable for not only defining specific tasks for these machines but also for recognizing the side effects of them so that's why we have created you know two jobs as part of our 21 jobs and 21 more jobs of the future reports so these are the reports that we published you know some time ago and uh, these are the jobs that provide a vision you know uh, of the future how exactly jobs are going to look like and what sort of jobs that we will uh, be working for as we move forward so these are the two jobs that we created as part of uh, you know two reports 21 jobs and 21 more jobs for instance the algorithm you know bias auditor just like you have an auditor in your organization you know, uh, doing the auditing of your books on similar lines, we need an algorithm bias auditor uh, because the auditor will establish an inventory system uh, that logs and tracks each significant algorithm uh, that is running across the organization. What are its objectives? Why are we using these algorithms? What are the, you know, uh, input, uh, you know, mechanism? What is the sort of output that we are getting? And the related, you know, human value judgments and consequences. So you will establish establish an inventory you know system that uh, logs and tracks each significant you know algorithm and uh, you know try to figure out uh, that uh, no algorithm is delivering a bias to the negative outcome and also we need roles like machine risk officer just like you have cio and cu and cmos in your organization what we really need is the mro the machine risk officer who's going to define roles and responsibilities between humans and machines and set the rules for uh, you know how human counterparts should handle machine caused wrongdoings right which means that designing trustworthy experiences training employees uh, developing risk benefit you know metrics and overhauling ethics principles and ensuring that employees are in the driver's seat to monitor you know machines so these are the you know two roles that we created as part of our 21 jobs and 21 more jobs uh, reports these reports are available in the public domain so i encourage uh, you know everyone to download these uh, you know reports and get a, a clue get a feel of how future jobs are going to look like and what exactly they mean for you as well as you know your for our organizations and also, right, the second recommendation is about uh, the be a good, you know, AI parent because uh, bot, uh, bots needs lots of, you know, training, right? And, uh, and existing biases, you know, like uh, showing doctors as mostly male or over-representing, you know, white skin, uh, they get it you know, amplified, right? If we are not providing the right set of training. So just like, you know, we show our kids good behavior, right? Even when surrounded, you know, by people uh, doing the opposite, we need to oversample uh, data to help our machines, you know, build a better world rather than, you know, recreate a world where the trolls, you know, win. 
So this is what we really need to do. We need to become a good AI, you know, parent. And also put some, uh, you know, philosopher. It it may sound, uh, you know, a bit, uh, bit, bit uh, you know, funny, but just think about it, you know. This is a broad generalization and maybe, you know, completely biased. But in general, uh, engineers try harder to solve technical challenges and social challenges. It's why the, you know, Facebook platform is a, is a, is a technological wonder. But the unintended consequences of Facebook, like the election tipping, uh, giving, uh, you know, trolls uh, a platform. So many such, you know, issues, right, uh, crop up when there is a technological wonder that is happening, uh, and, you know, around you. So it's gotten bigger than anyone suspected, you know, it could. And uh, that's where uh, AI can amplify bad behavior even better than good, uh, you know, behavior. So social scientists and psychologists, you know, are trained to think about, uh, you know, humans more than, you know, silicon. So it's time to make uh, them part of the technology, you know, development process. So having those anthropologists, you know, philosophers, uh, psychologists, uh, and social scientists to be a part of the coding process so that, uh, you know, uh, Technical experts, right, who are building these machines, they consider the human morality when it comes to the design and the execution of machines. And last but not least, you know, uh, we any lack of, you know, gender uh, parity, that is going to be a disaster for all of us, which means that how we teach. So when it comes to, you know, teaching uh, the, the machine, you know, learning, uh, you know, algorithms, how to build those machines, we really need to include uh, the inclusion aspect because, uh, People who are building, you know, these machines, who are doing the coding, right, the designers, the engineers, if you look at, uh, most of them are, you know, men. And what we really need is the diversification, the diversity, the gender diversity in the coding, uh, you know, community as well. Obviously, we need more inclusive teams, you know, working on AI and other technologies. And exclusion is, you know, bad for societies, you know, cultures and, uh, you know, companies. So it's already, you know, well known that girls are often not encouraged, you know, in STEM programs or, uh, you know, they lack in many of the, you know, areas. They are restricted uh, to, to, you know, grow up the ladder. So we have to really, really bust, you know, uh, those, uh, those, those uh, notions, right, and ensure that when it comes to the coding community, when it comes to the, you know, technological, you know, experts, right, there is a good diversification that is, uh, you know, happening. Because the more we rely on AI, the easier it will be to say, well, the bot said to hire that guy, so my hands are tied, I can't do anything about it. So humans, you know, building these, uh, you know, systems simply must keep their eyes on the unintended consequences, you know, of uh, the future. So these are the, you know, these are the couple of suggestions, right, that we, uh, provide when it comes to how to handle when you know machines fail because making the 21st century better for humans and by humans this is what we really need to do because at the end of the day right as machine intelligence right obviously is becoming smarter machine is doing more and more of our work but still human intelligence is very much needed to deploy you know sensibly and the way we are going to use ai because AI is a tool to make humans, you know, become better humans at the end of the day. Because the way we train AI will shape the future of our work. After all, even humans are, you know, needed to train and develop the, the personalities of, uh, you know, uh, Apple, Siri, or Amazon's, you know, Alexa, these devices, to ensure they accurately reflect the companies, you know, brands. So definitely humans are very much needed, uh, you know, as we move forward to, create the future of work because human plus machine is the new reality on one hand we don't need to get scared of you know bots coming and taking our jobs we don't need to do that once we have done the deconstruction of jobs versus tasks but at the same time as machines are becoming smarter we still need humans to ensure that machines are delivering the right outcomes and not delivering any biased on unintended you know business outcome so that's my story. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Manish. That is a very interesting presentation. You've just heard how we can master the future work economy.